myself as the best I'm blessed to know that lust is a test I used to be the victim, now I'm just envisioning I'm knowing this is I'm Susie Landolfi, and welcome to Be Crazy Well. Somebody uh, said something to me today. We were talking about uh, intrusive thoughts. And she was asking, she first said, I'm lost. And then I said, that's because you're changing. So you're changing. She's just graduated from college. She was working at a bookstore and now they've cut her hours back. Yet she started her own, um, she didn't start it, but she's doing her own radio channel. And then she's thinking about moving uh, to another parent's house uh, or her parent's house in a different city. Now, she also happens to live in a wheelchair. Uh, She was born with cerebral palsy. And I was thinking about what she was asking me about being lost and this anxiety and intrusive thoughts. And I said something I've never said before. You're just transforming and transitioning into the next you. And I was like, Wait a minute, wait a minute. The next you. So welcome to Be Crazy Well. I'm Susie Landolfi. And I I was struck by this idea of the next you. Like the next meal, the next car, um, your next child, uh, your next vacation. I mean, how many times have we said, you know, this idea of something next? And I said to her, you're just transitioning into the next you. Why is that not a part of our discussion about life and human development? And it's such a welcomed and anxiety-ridden and sometimes grief-ridden, just part of being human. The next you. Now, the nice thing about being old, I just celebrated a birthday. And I'm excited about this birthday, but I'm more excited about the one that's going to come. So I'm always one of those people that are going to go, you know, next, like what's next, the next birthday. So I'm 74 now. I was 73 to 74. And of course, I'm very excited about being 75. And I realized that much To my surprise, because no one ever told me this, every 10 years, every time there's a a big shift in my age, and I usually did it by zeros, um, then I was very different. I was very different at 10 than I was at 20, than I was at 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And yet no one told me that. No one talked to me about the next you. No one encouraged me to think about the next you. No one encouraged me to plan for the next me and the next you. And therefore, it was like life was happening to me, not that I was happening to life. And when I said this to her about the next you, I saw how it affected her. She was like, oh, oh, I'm just moving into the next me, so I don't have to worry as much. It's natural. Does everybody go through this? And I said, yes. And then I thought, well, I don't think everybody does. I think some of us, we kind of resist the next you. I think some of us want to stay in just the you that we sense, we know, we uh, have built, and we just want to stay there. The trouble is, the community is going to change, your family is going to change, your body is going to change. Whether you like it or not, there's always going to be a next you. Wouldn't it be nice if we were actually trained to create the next you? Now, I do think a lot of people do do it. I'm just worried that sometimes we do it just in our career. Like, what's next in my career? I hear that a lot. Like, what's next in my career? I don't hear a lot of like, what's next in my emotional life? What's next in my intellectual knowledge? What's next in my uh, spiritual well-being? I don't always hear those words about planning and creating 
the next us, the next me, the next you. I'm also wondering if it's not true that we have the next us. Wouldn't it be wonderful if family members, couples, friends actually sat down and said, what's the next us? I was working with a young couple the other day and they were very, uh, being very upset with one another, not even understanding why they now have three kids. To, I'm sorry, two kids, one of which is three. And they were really struggling with this three-year-old. And what I saw happen was because I know their personal struggle with one another was that the three-year-old was just doing the three-year-old version of them. So she was hearing all of this struggle and then she was mimicking it as only a three-year-old can from a three-year-old perspective. And when we talked about their next them as a couple, it was almost as if saying that and, and having them understand that they're just moving into a new era of them, that they were holding on to the past them. They were scared of the next them. They didn't know how to handle the next them. They didn't come from families that created the next them. They just fell into it. They struggled into it. They resisted it. Like none of it was planned, uh, talked about, and practiced. So as we talked about this idea of the three-year-old just doing the three-year-old version of them, they realized that they could change this by changing them, by how they got along with one another, how they created them. So here's what they did. They actually sat down with the three-year-old and apologized for the arguing that they'd been doing. And they explained that it wasn't okay when they yelled, it wasn't okay when they did all kinds of things. And the child then was a bit confused because it already thought that it had been trained, that this was them now, this is how things are going to be. And I got a wonderful text from them and said, things are better. We're much better together. We're really actually liking each other again the way we did when we first met. And that creating of the next them, it sounds like they went back you know, to the old them. It's not true. They can't. They can't go back to the old them. It has to be the next them with two children. It has to be them understanding that they get to create the love and excitement and joy and fun that they naturally got when they first met. So now they get to create it in a different way. And they have two people watching them, two children watching them create the next them. And they're going to reflect back what they see, what they hear. And I thought, how wonderful. Like whoever talks about children being able to show us who and what we are and what we really do, not just what we say we do, not just how we present ourselves to everybody outside. And this is an opportunity for children to actually present the next you, the next them. I also was thinking about how we resist this idea that we're losing something when we get older as opposed to gaining so much as we get older. I can honestly tell you, I've never, ever been upset about getting older. I've never, ever been afraid of getting older. I've never said I was younger than I was. Um, I can't say that I, I wasn't a little anxious in terms of I wasn't quite sure how to do it. Um, and I wasn't quite sure what it meant to be 40, 50, 60, or 70 until I actually started to create my own 40, 50, 60, and 70. And once I started to do that, once I realized that I had a choice of creating the next me, I didn't have to do what others were doing. So I used to watch people like when I was 40 or 50 and 60 and see what other 50-year-old women were doing or what 50-year-old men were doing or anybody 50. Like So I turned 50 and I'm like, okay, I guess I'm supposed to do that. The trouble was those, I guess I'm supposed to, uh, didn't always fit me. 
And so then I decided to create the next me by picking and choosing who I was going to be at 50, what it meant for me to be 50, not what it meant for anybody else to be 50. And so the next me at 50 was actually quite different than the me, obviously, as other people at 50. But more than that, the next me was actually in some ways healthier than the 40. Wait, I was a better athlete at 50 than at 40. There were things that I could do better at 50. So I didn't actually lose as much as I thought because I was creating the next me, physically, emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, and financially, the next me was actually better in so many ways. Now, that's not to say that I wasn't different and then I didn't like have some things change. I obviously am not as strong at 70 as I was at, say, 50. I can't bench press as much. <laughs> There's some things I cannot lift the way that I could before. Okay, get that. But there's things I can do that I couldn't do at 50. My flexibility actually is better at 74. My ability to see things in a kinder way is better. My ability to understand the cycle of life, my ability to accept, my ability to be more patient, my ability to appreciate more my ability to be more mindful and focused is far greater at 74 than it was at 54 or 44 or 24. So I've made it a, a practice that I am going to create the next me, no matter how old I am, no matter the circumstances. Now, this is the hard part. What if your circumstances aren't what you want? What if you live in a situation that has very few resources? What if you're living in a situation where you actually have very less choice or very little power to make big changes in your life and to create the next you? What if you're actually sad and scared, anxious and depressed, and even just getting out of bed is difficult? I would say that you get to honor that. You get to acknowledge that, that you're in a difficult situation. You're maybe even in an unfair situation. You might even be in a desperate situation. So what does it mean then to create the next you? Well, maybe it means very small changes. Small changes that actually could become major, major inspiration for change. There was a time when I lost everything. My childhood trauma was so great, and I tried to out achieve it, outrun it, outdo everything it for a while. And it's impossible. And I just crashed and burned. I, I just could not keep up with covering up, trying to overcome all the fear and sadness that I was carrying around. So I say this with all due love and respect. Thank God I crashed and burned. Thank God I lost everything. Nice thing about losing everything is, is that you get to start over. <clears throat> you also have to grieve what you lost, that's for sure. And yet, I wouldn't change that. I would not go back and say, I wouldn't want that to happen. If all of a sudden there was this ability to erase something from my past, that wouldn't be it. I would not go back and say, okay, I don't want that to happen. I would welcome that because it was the moment that I actually built a foundation that I could stand on that I could literally stand on and have it be safer. And I know that I built it. I know what was in that foundation. It also meant that the foundation I built was capable of, of holding anything I put on it. 
that I could rearrange things. I could redecorate. Um, I, I could even add on to the foundation that I knew now what my foundation was before I did not. My foundation was something I was so unaware of how much that trauma had had really hurt me in so many ways, physically, emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, and financially. It also had given me a lot of strength and a lot of wisdom, I, I agree, and not enough to be able to create the next me. It couldn't even hold up the me I had. So what if, what if that situation you're in is so desperate, dire, sad, and scary? What if a small change actually was all that was needed? And because we can't make the big changes, we are absolutely convinced we are held hostage. We are stuck. It's never going to change. Uh, I can't do anything about it. It can't get better. Now, I don't mean it, it 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 may better may need to be defined, meaning better like I need a better house and a car and I need all these things and all of that. Maybe better is supposed to be defined and be specific. What if better meant that I could sleep a little bit longer? I could become more rested? What if it meant that I would give myself time each day to go for even a short walk to do some deep breathing so that I could face what's next, what I had to do? What if I could make a small change and ask for some help from people who are capable and don't want anything for that help? What if I could read something to gain a little bit of perspective or wisdom? What if I could ask somebody for just a hug, just something to say, I'm a little shaky and a hug would help me right now? What if it's that small of a change for the next you? I know I've I've been in a situation where everything had to change very much and it did. And now I'm in a place where the smallest thing can change me. The smallest moment can help me be better. And I invite you to think about the next you. I invite you to put as much time and energy into creating the next you as you do uh, your next cake, your next vacation, your next, I don't know, car, your next conversation with someone, that you literally put time and energy into creating the next, whatever that is. I just came back from Puerto Rico. I went there to see a wonderful young man who I've worked with now for, I think it's almost two and a half years. And he was, uh, uh, he's a boxer. And I went there to support him and spend some time with his family and friends and to cheer him on. And I was thinking about how he has created the next him. When I saw him two and a half years ago, there were many times that he'd walk into a ring and get in, into the um, ring, and there were a lot of boos in the audience, more boos than, than people um, screaming him on and, and giving him support. He was very afraid at that time to be vulnerable, to be liked. It was much better to be hated. He could use that for motivation. And as we did the work and he started to understand more about creating the man he really wanted to be and to grieve the things that had happened to him and to base his life now more on principles uh, than his fear and sadness around who he thought he had to be. When he walked into the uh, ring this time, there were 17,000 people cheering him on. It had gone from boos to adulation like he had never heard. And after the fight, which only lasted two minutes and 32 seconds, so good of a fighter he is, boxer he is, I was sitting on a couch with him later on, uh, about an hour after or so. I sat next to him and I hugged him and he hugged me. And I said, what did it feel like 
to hear all of that support, all of those people cheering for you, and with a little bit of tears in his eyes, he said, it made me so happy. It made me so happy. And I thought, wow, 27 years old and is now mindful about creating the next him. He knows how to get ready for the next fight. What he really knows how to do now is to get ready for the next friend, the next uh, part of his life, the next uh, idea that he wants to help create, the next movement that he wants to do, the next person he wants to help, um, all of that, what he wants to do with his nonprofit and who he wants to be, the next him. So as you can see, I talked about two people that I absolutely adore and I feel honored to work with. And I feel that way about everybody that I work with. They teach me all the time. These are the courageous people that regardless of their resources and where they are physically, emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually, and financially, they are courageous enough to look at creating the next them. They're not going to let life do it for them. They're not just going to follow the rest of the people. They're going to find out and practice and work on creating the next them. What are you going to be? Who are you going to be? The next you. What kind of time and energy and compassion and grace and courage and struggle are you willing to do to create the next you? And it has to be by you, for you. It can't just be, well, this is what my kids want. This is what my partner wants. Uh, this is what my work wants. It has to be you creating you. No one else can do that for you. No one else can crawl inside of you and create you. You get to do you. You get to create that. And regardless of the struggle, regardless of illness, regardless of age, regardless of resources, even small steps, small changes, small mindful moments can help you create the next you. <sighs> just wanted to share that with you. It just came out. I was thinking about it today and I said, I got to get on crazy well, be crazy well and share with with all of you, how we can be the next us, the next you. Until next time, be your best self. That's the name of our theme song. Thank you, Calvin Love. Look him up. Just saw him on Instagram snowboarding. He's doing a great job snowboarding. He wanted to go over a jump. It was a great video because he said, I want to go over that jump, but I don't want to fall down. I don't blame him. I don't want to fall down either. <laughs> okay. All right. Till next time, be crazy well. <laughs>